am not able to use my fine well fine so today's topic will be based on basics then we'll deal with the optional vaccines then we'll go ahead with each and every single vaccine okay so what you will be given in your examination is basically you will be asked to pick up one or two of the vaccines you initially you will be asked about the basics of the vaccination then you will be asked to tell your immunization schedule so please be thorough with your uh, national immunization schedule as well as your iap schedule after that then you will be asked to pick up two to three vaccines will and will be asked certain basic questions about it okay so you are expected to know by heart the national immunization schedule as well as the <clears throat> iap now coming to the basics of vaccination so first one we'll be doing we will deal with the types of vaccination okay so coming to the types of vaccination we have the live attenuated vaccines now when asked about each single type of vaccines deal it deal with it systematically okay so classify it the first one is live attenuated vaccine under that you talk about bacterial and viral as the heading under bacterial talk about the bacterial vaccines like bcg typhoid cholera and typhus vaccine epidemic typhus vaccine under viral comes the opv mmr varicella rotavirus yellow fever and je so these are the live attenuated vaccine presently je <coughs> Okay, these are the live attenuated vaccine then comes the killed vaccine okay under killed vaccine or inactivated vaccine again we'll divide it as bacterial and viral fine so bacterial and viral under bacterial comes petrusis cholera meningococcal plague and typhoid under viral comes the ipv rabies hepatitis a and b influenza japanese encephalitis and kft okay next comes the subunit vaccine so under subunit vaccine you know it can be divided into toxoids proteins recombinant vaccine okay recombinant proteins under toxoids diphtheria tetanus and anthrax diphtheria tetanus and anthrax under protein comes the acellular petrosis vaccine okay acellular petrosis vaccine and the influenza vaccine under the recombinant vaccine comes the hepatitis b okay then comes the polysaccharide vaccine and conjugate vaccine now what is the difference between polysaccharide vaccine and conjugate vaccine conjugate vaccine can be given even in children less than 2 years and it is more immunogenic because for conjugate vaccine if given it can uh, what it stimulates the immune system in such a way that the memory cells are produced okay so conjugate vaccine is more immunogenic one more is it is can be given in less than 2 years why because the polysaccharide vaccine which goes and stimulates is their uh, marginal zone center in the um, uh, lymph node okay or in the thymus it goes and stimulates the marginal zone center and this is not developed in case of less than 2 years children okay so that's the advantage of conjugate over polysaccharide vaccines now to name a few salmonella hiv meningococcal pneumococcal are polysaccharide and the same pneumococcal and meningococcal vaccine are available in our conjugate as well next comes the schedule so how do you remember the schedule first is the national immunization schedule okay national immunization schedule what happened is initially when it came up there were six vaccine preventable diseases okay so they were the b6 dpt along with polio tuberculosis and measles these were the initial vaccines which were being given in the past then what happened then came the mission indradhanush came up okay so this mission indradhanush added up hepatitis b as well this happened somewhere in 2015 along with these six vaccines hepatitis b as well came into picture with mission indradhanush coming up and the uh, and the aim was to achieve 90% full immunization coverage by 2020 after this what happened our game, government came up since they were not able to meet this target our government came up with intensified mission indradhanush okay intensified mission indradhanush under this came nine vaccine preventable diseases and presently that is there is intensified mission indradhanush 2 intensified mission indradhanush 2 under this a total of 12 vaccine preventable diseases are present okay so under national immunization schedule we have 12 vaccine preventable diseases these are the 12 vaccine pre preventable diseases and then what is important to know is how do we give this vaccine how do we end up giving this vaccine what is the schedule 
okay so it is simple most of you guys will know this by heart by now okay if you guys have attended your coaching well you guys are expected to know this by heart okay so at birth what do we give bcg opv and hepatitis b three do three vaccines to be given at birth bcg opv hepatitis b next is at 6 10 and 14 weeks okay 6 10 and 14 weeks it is simple opv 1 2 and 3 okay then pentavalent 1 2 and 3 okay next is the rotavirus vaccine 1 2 and 3 then is the pneumococcal vaccine and fipv which we give only two okay 6 and 14 weeks and pneumococcal vaccine 6 and 14 weeks this is the schedule opv 1 2 3 pentavalent 1 2 3 rotavirus 3 fipv and pneumococcal vaccine we just give two doses at 6 and 14 weeks fine next is at 9 months we give vitamin a after this every 6 monthly we give vitamin a after 5 years next is the between 9 to 12 months we give mr first vaccine then in the endemic areas we give je as well and we give a pneumococcal booster then between 16 to 18 months we give second dose of vitamin a okay <coughs> then between 16 to 24 months we give dpt booster mr second dose and je2 in endemic areas between 5 to 6 years we give second booster of dpt and at 10 to 16 years we give td okay so that is the national immunization schedule uh if you guys want i'll repeat it once again at birth is three vaccines bcg opv hepatitis b 6 10 and 14 opv 1 2 3 pentavalent 1 2 3 rotavirus vaccine 1 2 3 and at 6 and 14 weeks fipv and pneumococcal vaccine 9 months vitamin a 9 to 12 months is mr je1 and pcv booster 16 to 18 months we give vitamin a 16 to 24 months is dpt booster one mr second dose and japanese encephalitis second dose 5 to 6 years is second booster of dpt along with 10 to 16 years one more dose of td okay so as simple as that next is the iip schedule indian academy of pediatrics okay so you guys don't have to worry it is a most recent updated schedule and this 6 10 and 14 weeks remains the same okay 6 10 and 14 weeks remains the same only changes the since enough amount since this it is not freely given up given by the government instead of fipv we can go ahead and give ipv itself okay so that is what iip recommends and if it's ipv we will have to give it as three doses so ipv 1 2 and 3 okay ipv 1 2 and 3 and pneumococcal vaccine again 1 2 and 3 fine so this is the iap recommendation so birth dose 6 10 and 14 remains the same except for ipv which is 1 2 and 3 fine <coughs> next comes at 6 months and 7 months we give influenza virus vaccine 1 and 2 okay so this is between 6 months and 7 months that is what adds up between 14 weeks and the 9 months vaccine okay one more thing that gets added up is typhoid conjugate vaccine with between 6 to 9 months okay then 9 months as how as and how we give our um, mr vaccine in national immunization schedule over here we give instead of, along with mr we add mmr mumps as well gets added okay so mmr at 9 months at 12 months hepatitis a at 15 months mmr2 varicella 1 and pcv booster at 16 to 18 months we give a booster of dpt hiv booster and ipv booster okay at 18 to 19 months we give hepatitis a2 and varicella 2 at 4 to 6 years one more booster of dpt we give booster of ipv and mmr3 is given and at 10 to 12 years along with tdap we give hpv as well okay so this is the iip schedule uh, national immunization schedule most of you will be knowing by heart now now i know but iip as well try to memorize because if you guys are really good and end up answering national immunization schedule they would expect you guys to know the iip schedule as well now coming to the root okay so we all know how do we give our uh, injections there are three routes basically intramuscular intradermal and subcutaneous 
intramuscular we give at 90 degree intradermal we give it at 15 degree and subcutaneous we give at 45 degree okay so now what are the subcutaneous vaccines mmr is given subcutaneous varicella is given subcutaneous meningococcal polycyclic vaccine is given subcutaneous je and yellow fever are given subcutaneous so these are the vaccines that are given subcutaneous mmr varicella meningococcal polysaccharide japanese encephalitis and yellow fever now next what is given is intramuscular and subcutaneous it can be given both intramuscular as well as subcutaneous that is ipv and pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine okay rest all are given im okay rest all are given im and few like opv rotavirus vaccine is given oral as well okay so all you guys need to remember is what are the subcutaneous vaccines apart from this everything else is Apart from that, everything else is given intramuscular. Next, coming to the site. Now, site, it is simple to remember, okay? Oh, everyone less than two months, okay? Until the children, until they are less than one year or infants, whichever intramuscular vaccine is given, that is given into the anterolateral aspect of the thigh because the muscle mass is more over there. The whole point of giving IM is to give it into the muscle, correct? That is why wherever there is a good muscle mass, there we expect to give. So for infants, we give on the anterolateral aspect of the thigh. So once they grow up, the preferred site is the deltoid. The preferred site is deltoid, okay? Subcutaneous, again, for infants, we give it in the thigh. For children older than one year, we give it in the outer triceps region, okay? And all the intradermal injections are given in the left deltoid, left deltoid, okay? So this was the site. Now coming to the other components, okay? So what are the other components that can be present in the vaccine? One is the adjuvant, other one is antibiotic so that it doesn't get contaminated. Three, certain preservatives, four, stabilizers, okay? Six is the buffers, seven is the diluent, and eight is the emulsifiers. These are the eight components that can be present, okay? Other components that can be present in the vaccine. Now, what is an adjuvant? Adjuvant is added to enhance the immune response. And these are the few examples. Antibiotic, as we all know, to prevent bacterial contamination. Then certain preservatives, these are chemicals <laughs> added to the killed or subunit vaccines in order to inactivate the vaccine or detoxify the bacterial toxins or to prevent secondary infection. So this is the role of preservatives, okay? Next is the stabilizers. Why do we use stabilizers? They are used to maintain the quality or stability of the product, okay? Stability of the product. Next is the buffers. And as the name suggests, they are used to neutralize the effect of the pH, okay? And finally comes the diluents and the emulsifiers. Diluents are used to dilute the vaccine. Like, And this one question, others, if you know one or two examples is fine, but this they might ask in specific, BCG should be diluted using normal saline, whereas measles should be diluted using distilled water, okay? Please be know these two points, okay? These two points, the examiners are fond of asking. Next is the emulsifier. It is to decrease the surface tension. Now, next question, what they might ask is, what are the, like you have a child with nephrotic syndrome, okay? That is a quite common scenario. Or you have a child with immunocompromised state. So any of the immunocompromised states, what are the additional vaccines that you will ask them to give? What are the additional, additional though they are costly, we can understand. But if you are allowed to give an advice, what are the additional vaccines that you are supposed to give? So IAP gives six additional recommendations, okay? One is meningococcal, Japanese encephalitis, oral cholera vaccine, rabies, yellow fever, and pneumococcal vaccine, okay? Pneumococcal vaccine. Along with this, we can tell varicella as well. Varicella as well, we can tell. So these seven vaccines are the additional optional vaccines that we recommend in high-risk children. Fine. Now we'll deal with individual vaccines, okay? We'll deal with individual vaccines. Now, if you are asked to pick up a single vaccine, most of the times the examiners are really good. So they will be lenient enough to ask you to pick up the vaccine, okay? 
so in that case you go ahead with the vaccine that you are confident enough with fine now fine next is when you are asked to pick up a single vaccine what you do is do, don't try to mess up things okay do not get confused you go systematically okay fine so now since you are going to go systematically what are the headings you will be dealing with in the individual vaccine is talk about the type of the vaccine talk about the dosage talk about the route site okay then what is the schedule if after telling the schedule talk about the catch up schedule then talk about any adverse effects adverse effects that are there and contraindication so these are the headings under which you will talk about type what is the dosage what is the route what is the site that is given what is the schedule national immunization schedule and the iap schedule what is the catch up vaccination what is the adverse effects following the immunization and contraindications okay so these are the things that you guys need to talk about fine now coming to bcg so the bcg stands for bacillus calmet and gurin okay bacillus calmet and gurin now what is the type of vaccine as we all know we have already read before it is a live attenuated vaccine okay now what is the strain used next danish 1331 strain it is used and it is derived from mycobacterium coli Arithvi, can you please mute yourself? And what is the dose that is given? Dose that is given is 0.1 ml. Okay, 0.1 ml is the dose that is given. What is the route? It is intradermal. Intradermal using the tuberculin syringe. Okay, fine. Intradermal using the tuberculin syringe. It is a 26 gauge syringe. now what is the site site is left upper arm at the insertion of deltoid left upper arm at the insertion of deltoid uh one thing that is special to bcg vaccine and under, and we will get to know that the bcg vaccine that we have given is acting well on the child is phenomena after vaccination okay this you guys will be asked now what is it initially once we give we once we give the vaccination the first chain that is supposed to occur is a wheel a wheel of around 5 mm after vaccine and this happens immediately after 2 to 3 weeks a papule develops in the same site a papule develops many a times parents will be apprehensive and they will come to opd telling there is a there is something like infection or a boil that has occurred in the left upper arm of the child so and most of the times it will be counseling that telling it is the bcg vaccine and it tells us that the bcg vaccine which we have given is acting well and the patients will be happy enough okay next the same papule increases to size of 4 to 8 mm by the end of 5 to 6 weeks fine and then he this papule breaks up and it heals with ulceration and results in scarring this happens between 6 to 12 weeks so first a wheel develops then the papule develops the same papule increases in size to 4 to 8 mm and then it breaks up it heals with ulceration and scarring and this takes place between 6 to 12 weeks fine now presence of scar later on in life indicates that bcg vaccine is given but then there might come up a situation wherein there is no bcg scar in that case what do you do in that case most of the time that they might not be vaccinated but if it so happens that in 10% of children even though the vaccine has been given there will be no scarring that will take place okay next is the schedule national immunization schedule and the iap schedule when it is given it is given at birth all of you guys no so it is given at birth fine next is the catch up when do we give when do we advise catch up it is in all individuals with tuberculin sensitive test and igra or igna negative status who are staring at in the regions with high incidence of tb or leprosy or who are moving from a region of low to high incidence areas for for example if they are moving from a developed country to an underdeveloped country or who are at risk of occupational exposure like a healthcare 
worker okay so all these people are expected to receive bcg fine now what are the adverse effects bcg contains quite a few one is local severe ulceration injection site abscess okay separative lymphadenitis can take place or systemic can be disseminated bcg disease disseminated bcg disease which usually occurs in immunocompromised osteitis okay osteitis osteomyelitis can take place uveitis can take place or lupus vulgaris contraindications will be immunocompromised state since it's a live vaccine and allergic reactions fine so these are the headings that you are going to talk about for each and every individual vaccine now we are done with bcg next is your polio vaccine now we all know that there are two types of polio vaccines one is oral polio vaccine second is inactivated polio vaccine oral polio vaccine is the live type and inactivated polio vaccine is the killed type and now the whole process is to switch from oral polio vaccine to a totally inactivated polio vaccine because of the certain side effects that are present with oral polio vaccine though it is better and we all know that is the one that is going to act if a situation comes up wherein suddenly the disease spurts up okay now coming to the oral vaccine we'll go with in the same systematic and organized manner first is the type oral polio vaccine is live attenuated okay from the strain called sabine strain okay it contains several types presently it is bivalent 1 and 3 okay after the whole switch that has taken place now only two strains are present 1 and 3 fine next how do we give what is the dose we give it in two drops okay and it is given orally okay magnesium chloride is the stabilizing agent that is used you might be asked about this in your exams and potency of vaccine how do we determine using the vaccine vial monitor okay because it is heat sensitive and then the schedule national immunization schedule and the iap schedule so when when all do we give as per the national immunization schedule we give it in 6 at birth 6 10 and 14 weeks and the same is to do with the iap as well now children below 5 years of age should re <coughs> receive doses uh, yeah uh, what happens is apart from this to maintain herd immunity okay so if someone has missed in case to maintain herd immunity our government of india can what does the pulse polio immunization program so whenever pulse polio immunization program is there additional doses has to be received despite of the fact that they have received during the national immunization schedule now what are the adverse effects one is vaccine associated paralytic polio this is mainly to do with the serotype 2 okay and next is the vaccine derived polio virus wherein the virus that is present live attenuated virus mutates itself and becomes potent enough to cause the disease so these are the major drawbacks of oral polio vaccine though it is better than inactivated polio vaccine contraindication is immunodeficiency now next is inactivated polio vaccine okay so ipv it is a killed vaccine developed initially developed by salt okay it contains three strains okay type 1 strain which is manha which is the brunhill type type 2 is me and 1 and type 3 is socket okay so these are the three strains it contains and it is grown in vero cell culture fine what is the dose if it is given im the dose is 0.5 ml but since our population is quite huge and it accounts to a whole lot of burden similar dosage can be given with ipv that is fractional ipv what we do here is we give one fifth of the dose one fifth of the actual dose we give but we give it twice okay so we give one fifth of the actual dose and that will be accounting to 0.1 ml so if it is im it is 0.5 ml if it is intradermal it is 0.1 ml root is intramuscular and for fipv it is intradermal site <coughs> if fipv it is given over right upper arm okay if it is fipv it is given over right upper arm fine schedule national immunization schedule and iap schedule is being followed so as per national immunization schedule we give it in um, at 6 and 14 weeks and as per national iap schedule we give it at 6 10 and 14 weeks ipv is given at 6 10 and 14 weeks fine next is the catch up catch up is at uh, 
zero, two, and six months up to five years. Okay, zero, two, and six months is given, and up to five years it can be given. Adverse effect is local pain and swelling. Contraindication is allergy. Next, you'll be asked about the difference between the killed vaccine and the live type. So, IPV is the killed vaccine, SOC type, and the OPV is the live vaccine, that is the subbing type. This is killed, this is uh, the live type. The killed one is given intramuscular, and the live one is given orally. <coughs> it induces circulating antibody, but there is no local immunity that is being produced. But OPV, since it is given orally, it produces local immunity as well as circulating antibodies. Fine. It prevents paralysis, but it does not prevent in free infection by wild poliovirus. But this prevents both. Fine. The IPV is not useful in controlling epidemics, but OPV can be effectively used during epidemics as well. This is more difficult to manufacture as compared to OPV. Fine. These are the few points that you guys have to remember. Now we are done with two vaccines, BCG and OPV we are done with. Next, we are going to deal with hepatitis B. Fine. What is the type of vaccine? Type of vaccine hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is a recombinant vaccine. What do we use over here? We use hepatitis B surface antigen as the active substance. So it is a recombinant vaccine. And what is the subunit that is used? It is the hepatitis B surface antigen. What is the dose? 0.5 ml in children. But if it's adolescents and in adults, it is 0.1 ml. In adults and adolescents, it is 0.1 ml. In children, it is 0.5 ml. All we, we all know it is given IM and <clears throat> side. Then you might get confused between left or right thigh, correct? The pentavalent along with hepatitis. Hepatitis B is always given in the left thigh. So it is anterolateral aspect of the left thigh is hepatitis B. Then schedule, we follow the national immunization and the IAP schedule. Catch up, it can be administered to all with the uh, schedule being 0, 1 and 6 months. Okay, the schedule is 0, 1 and 6 months. That is the catch up that can be administered to all. Fine. What are the, and uh, yeah. Next is responders. We there are few, there might be few conditions wherein few of them are not responding to the hepatitis B, or they might end up coming to a situation wherein a healthcare worker or someone is immunized and they want to see whether they have good antibody titers or not. If in case they are exposed, okay. So in that case, whom do we call as responders? Is antibody titer should be more than ten milli international units per ml, okay. Next question you'll be asked is a situation where an infant is born with mother being positive. What do you do in such a case? First case is scenario is mother status is unknown. The mother might come up and you might have an emergency delivered baby. Okay. So in that case, you don't know the status of the mother. So what do we do that time? We give the first dose of hepatitis B. Okay. Within 12 hours of birth. Then if the mother is negative, well and good. But if mother is positive, in that case, within 48 hours, we give hepatitis B immunoglobulin, okay? Preferably within 48 hours. But if it's not available, then up to seven days of birth, we can give, okay? Next, if the mother status is no, okay? If she is going for an elective season section and they've done the serology and we get to know that the mother is hepatitis B positive. In that case, what do we do? If hepatitis B immunoglobulin is available, we give vaccination along with immunoglobulin within 12 hours of birth. Okay, it prevents 85 to 95 percent prevention is present. If the uh, hepatitis B immunoglobulin is not available, okay, you might be in a rural area wherein you have delivered in a small hospital, fine, and it is not available. In that case, you give vaccination at 0, 1, 2, and 9 to 12 months. Okay, four doses are given. And this has efficacy of up to 70 to 75%. Next is adverse effect following immunization. Nothing but local reactions, anaphylaxis, fever and fatigue, and contraindication is allergic reaction to previous dose. Fine. Next is the DPT vaccine, okay? Diphtheria, petrosis, and tetanus. This contains three, diphtheria, petrosis, and Tetanus. Now, presently, it is given as pentavalent vaccine, but previously, it used to be 
given as diphtheria, petrosis, and tetanus toxin. Okay, so this is a it's a triple antigen. Okay, so diphtheria and tetanus toxides are present. Diphtheria and tetanus are toxides, but petrosis is a killed vaccine. Okay, there is killed whole cell vaccine, and or it can be a cellular petrosis. Vaccine now various combination are available. Okay, D D or D T W P wherein it is whole cell vaccine or D T A P wherein it is A cellular petrosis vaccine or it is T D A P small D is nothing but low dose. Okay, small D stands for low dose of diphtheria toxin. Low dose of diphtheria toxin we give it in children above seven years. Okay, small D stands for low dose vaccine and then there's D T or T D. Fine. What is the dose? It is 0.5 mL. It is given intramuscularly on the anterolateral aspect of the left mid thigh. Okay. Now schedule is as per national immunization and IAP schedule as we have already dealt with it. Next is the catch up. This is quite confusing and examiners do like to ask this question. What is the catch up? Okay. So less than seven. We divide it into less than seven years and more than seven years. If it is less than seven years, we give. DTAP or DTWP at zero, one, and six months. Okay, if it is less than seven years, it is big D. Okay, it is big D DTAP or DTWP at zero, one, and six months. If it is more than seven years, we tend to give the lower dose because that is enough to produce immune conversion. So we give a lower lower dose, and that becomes TDAP. Okay, TDAP at zero months, followed by TD at one and six months, followed by TD at One and six months, and in people who are above eighteen years, we just give a single dose of Tdap or Td. Okay, just a single dose. Fine. Next comes the adverse effect following immunization. Now, most of the adverse effects, since diphtheria and tetanus are toxides, they might just produce hypersensitivity reaction. Okay, so now most of the adverse effects that we deal with are because of the Petrosis component, okay, and the whole cell petrosis causes much more adverse effects as compared to a cellular petrosis. So a cellular petrosis is recommended even though it is costly. So IAP goes with a cellular petrosis. Fine. Next, so it can be local effects and systemic effects. Local effects are the same with both, and it can it will be pain, swelling, or redness at the local site. Systemic, it is the adverse effects are more with whole cell as compared to a cellular. Okay, so whole cell is associated with very severe, though these are very rarely occurring side effects. Okay, fever, anorexia, or vomiting, or there can be persistent crying. Then there can be next is H H E. Okay, hypotonic, hyperresponsive episodes, or seizures, or encephalopathy. Fine. The and what happens is with the increasing number of dosages. the frequency of local reactions become more but the frequency of systemic reactions decreases with increasing number of dosages fine now next coming to the contraindications so there are absolute contraindication relative contraindications and precautions fine and yeah fine so there can be absolute relative or precautions fine uh, and situations wherein you will have to be precautious fine coming to absolute contraindication absolute contraindications it is anaphylaxis okay anaphylaxis so <coughs> uh if it there is anaphylaxis then since we don't know to which component the anaphylaxis reaction has taken place so further immunization to any of these components is contraindicated next is encephalopathy occurring within 7 days after giving the dpt in that case further immunization can be given with dt components because it is a petrosis component that causes encephalopathy fine next relative contraindications are in a child with progressive or evolving neurological disorder in them it's a relative contraindication and precaution should be taken wherein the previous dose has resulted in persistent in so inconsolable cry for more than 3 hours or there was hyperpyrexia or there was an episode of hhe within 48 hours of vaccination or seizures with or without fever within 72 hours of vaccination with the previous doses okay 
because most of the times it tends to recur with the next dosage as well so if this history is present then it is better to give immunization and to observe the child for next few hours fine next is the rotavirus next is the rotavirus vaccination now what is the type of rotavirus it is a live vaccine now what are the types that are available rv1 that is rota rix rv5 rota tech then we have the rota vac and rota seal available so these are the four vaccines that are available in india rota rix rota tech rota vac and rota seal now what is the dosage if it is rota rix then 1 ml if it is rota tech then it is 2 ml and if it is rota vac we give 0.5 ml all of them are given orally okay in national immunization schedule we give rota vac okay so it is 0.5 ml in iap we give rv1 two doses and rv5 three doses fine if it is rota vac rota rix then we give two doses if it is rv5 rota is rota tech then we give three doses so if it is national immunization schedule then it is rota vac and we give three doses if it is iap schedule iap recommends either rota rix that is rv1 that can be given in two doses and that is 6 and 14 weeks or it, if it is rota tech that is rb5 then it is given in three doses that is 6 10 and 14 weeks now catch up schedule since there are high chances of interception interception that is associated and it mainly occurs in small age smaller younger age group less than 1 years who recommends all children to be vaccinated before 2 years if it is national immunization schedule then it is before 1 year of age Now, what are the adverse effects that are local reaction and intussusception? And intussusception is one of the main side effects. So be aware; they might ask the examiners. And contraindication is if with the previous episode there has been intussusception, then it's a contraindication. And since it is live vaccine, immunodeficiency is an other contraindication. <clears throat> Next comes pneumococcal vaccine. Now, what is there are high chances that they might end up asking pneumococcal vaccine this time because the national immunization schedule as well has given a go to be for pneumococcal vaccine to be given all over india Oh, am I audible? What are the types of pneumococcal vaccine? It is the polysaccharide vaccine and the conjugate vaccine. Fine. Now, what are the vaccines that are available? If it's the polysaccharide vaccine, then it is PPSV twenty three. Okay, twenty three PPS strains are present. PPSV twenty three conjugate vaccines. Different types are available. Seven strain, ten strains. Then the one containing thirteen strains. one containing 15 strains or 20 strains and the most recent one being pneumocid fine so these are the conjugate vaccines that are available 
Now, what is the basic difference between the what is the basic difference? Oh, my audio is fine right now. I'm audible, no? No? Yes, sir. Yeah, fine. Now, what are the dif main, uh, basic differences? I've already told polysaccharide and conjugate vaccine. Polysaccharide is given, recommended in children aged more than two years because, uh, because it goes and activates the marginal zone lymph nodes and that is not yet still developed in children less than two years. And this can be administered in children less than two years as well. Immune memory is poor, conjugate immune memory is good. Okay, nasopharyngeal carriage, polysaccharide vaccine doesn't reduce, but conjugate vaccine reduces. And there's no herd immunity induced by polysaccharide vaccine, but herd immunity is good with conjugate vaccine. Coming to the dose, 0.5 ml, both for PPSV23 and PCV13. And both are given intramuscular and it is given in the anterolateral aspect of the right thigh. So when it is given at 6, 10 and 14 weeks, the pentavalent, penta, this the examiners will ask, penta is given in the left thigh because both are given intramuscular. Pentavalent will be given in your left thigh and the pneumococcal vaccine will be given in your right thigh. Fine, schedule, both you guys will have to know the national immunization schedule as well as the IAP schedule. Fine. Next comes the catch-up vaccine. So catch-up vaccine, uh, in case the many of the times I get complained that the video is not clear, uh, most of the times you guys will be watching it in a low resolution. So increase it to the 720p or 480p, that time it becomes clear. Fine. Now coming to the vaccination status, if the vaccination status is incomplete, then we give one dose of PCV10 or 13 to all children aged between two to five years, okay, who are not completely vaccinated for the age. Fine, they've taken inappropriate vaccines, like they've taken once and they've lost to follow up. In that case, we give one <coughs> dose, fine. If they have not taken vaccine at all, then we go by age-wise. If it is between six to 12 months, then we give two doses, four weeks apart, followed by one booster in second year. If it is 12 to 24 months, then we give two doses, eight weeks apart. If it is more than two years, then just a single dose. Okay, simple. Six to 12 months, two doses, followed by a booster. 12 to 24 months is two doses and no booster. And 22 to five years is just one single dose. And children, most than five years, until and unless they're immunocompromised, there is no routine recommendation. Fine. Adverse effects are the usual adverse effects and contraindication is anaphylaxis, fine. Next is MR or the MMR vaccine. MMR being recommended in under IAP and MR being recommended under national immunization schedule. So what is the type? It is a MR or MMR is live vaccine, okay, live vaccine. Measles is derived from Edmonston, Zagreb strain. Rubella is RA27 but 3 strain and rubella is Zerilin strain. Zerilin strain. So please remember the names of these three strains. The examiners will invariably end up asking this. And it is given subcutaneously 0.5 ml and MMR or MR is given in your right upper arm. Okay. So there are two subcutaneous MMR that is given in your right upper arm and other one is JE that is given in left. Okay, left upper arm. Schedule, it is as per national immunization and IAP. National is MR and IAP recommends MMR. Fine. Catch up, all school going children and adolescents, two doses are recommended with four weeks apart. Two doses of MMR, four weeks apart, if not immunized previously. Now, what are the adverse effects? All three vaccines contains its own adverse effects. Coming to the measles, mild pain and tenderness, mild fever and rash, encephalitis, one case per million has been documented, or mild measles-like illness in 2 to 5% of population, and thrombocytic ITP can occur in 1 in 30,000 patients. These are the adverse effects related to measles. Next, coming to rubella, arthralgia can take place in 25% of children, 
arthritis in 10% of children and it is mainly occurs when given in older age group like adolescents and adults fine then mild fever or rash lymphadenopathy myalgia paresthesia and thrombocytopenia next is mumps mumps can come with fever or febrile seizures or aseptic meningitis like picture and transient parotitis but all these things that are present are occur very rarely okay so that does not prevent us from vaccinating the children contraindication is immunodeficiency and pregnancy next coming to the last vaccine that is human papilloma virus vaccine hpv virus fine now what is the type of vaccine it is mainly the subunit vaccine and how do we manufacture it is manufactured by recombinant dna technology as with other subunit vaccines and what is the vi virus particle that is used which is the protein component that is used that is hpv l1 particle this is the protein particle that is used fine now what are the vaccines that are available okay one is the quadrivalent vaccine this is called hpv4 and it is 6 11 16 and 18 okay it contains four strains okay apart from 16 and 18 which are main causative agents even 6 and 11 as well it contains fine next is the cervarix okay this contains two strains main strains that are responsible okay that is 16 and 18 main strains that are responsible for causing cancerous lesions fine and gardasil 9 but still this is not recommended in india yet okay it is still not being recognized by the indian government fine but this is the recent vaccine that has come up fine what is the dosage 0.5 ml how it is given intramuscular to deltoid region okay what is the schedule now between 11 to 12 years it is being recommended to be given under the iap it has to be given between 11 to 12 years though the minimum age that can be given is up to 9 years in case of exposure minimum age is 9 years but routinely recommended is 11 to 12 years okay and three doses are recommended now how do we give if it is gardasil that is hpv4 or the nine valent vaccine we give it at 0 2 and 6 months but if it is cervarix the bivalent vaccine we give it at 0 1 and 6 months fine catch up it is from 13 years up to 45 years because until then the exposure can be present so from 13 to 14 years 45 years it is recommended side effects can be syncope local pain swelling erythema or fever and contraindication is anaphylaxis fine now a small point regarding storage the cold chain temperature in india is between 2 to 8 degree celsius so any vaccine they ask what is the storage temperature then go ahead and tell it is confidently it is 2 to 8 degree celsius because the cold chain temperature recommended in india is 2 to 8 degree celsius then they might ask you which is heat sensitive and which is cold sensitive heat sensitive is our bcg and opv cold sensitive is most sensitive is hepatitis b most sensitive is hepatitis b then comes a t series vaccine or dpt okay tetanus okay so all these vaccines whichever has t with it are sensitive to cold and hence they should not be frozen then which is sensitive to light that is bcg and measles hence they come in the amber color bottles so uv the ones that are sensitive to uv rays is bcg and measles and cold storage temperature as already mentioned is 2 to 8 degree celsius now finally few general instructions that can be asked in our exam okay uh <coughs> vaccination or, yeah what what do we mean by vaccination at birth that is what do we mean by the when should we give our bcg hepatitis b and oral polio vaccine vaccination at birth means as early as possible as soon as the baby is born that is what is being recommended but if not available then it should be given between 24 to 72 hours after birth fine now in case like we are going to vaccinate a child at 6 weeks now what is the problem over here over there we are giving multiple vaccines correct so whenever such a situation arises wherein we will have to give multiple vaccines in that case it is always better it is not better we have to give it within 24 hours so if the whenever there is simultaneous administration then we will have to give it within 24 hours fine next when two or more live vaccines are being administered on the same day fine like we have to administer two live vaccines on the same day or on 
at the not same day at the same time okay now someone has come up come for catch up vaccination then that time we'll have to give oral polio vaccine as well as mr vaccine okay so this is the situation or okay so in that case what do we do is we'll have to give it within 24 hours so both the live vaccines have to be given within 24 hours if not given within 24 hours then a minimum gap of 28 days has to be present okay minimum gap of 4 weeks have to be present so if two vaccines live vaccines have to be given either give it within 24 hours but if that does not happen then a minimum gap of 24 hour, 24 sorry 28 days or 4 weeks is needed okay this is next very important viva question that examiners are fond of asking so there will be like if two live vaccines have to be given what is the gap that needs to be given so please remember that point then with what is yeah on the same day any number of antigens can be given okay and any patient if we give vaccine a minimum of 15 to 20 minutes of waiting period or observation is needed because they might develop any anaphylactic reactions okay and then if on the same site if two vaccines have to be given a minimum of 1 to 2 inches of gap is needed because if local reaction takes place we don't know to which component which vaccine it is being taken place correct so a minimum of 1 to 2 inches of gap is needed yeah so that's it guys so this i think i have covered up most of the major vaccines that can be asked under immunization most of the important viva questions that will be asked i have tried to cover up fine so most of the vaccines are covered and the basic questions that will be asked are being covered you guys have to invariably know national immunization schedule and iap schedule fine